Live streaming is on. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Dan Day. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of Block Search Blockchain, and uh, we're here with another um, great live YouTube streaming this morning of the Digital Fly Zone. And we've been doing this since February of uh, this year, every single Friday. And uh, with one person, he says it's his uh, every Friday mass that he can't miss. And so we uh, appreciate those that continue to join us and the growing audience. And I uh, really appreciate that. Um, this morning, I'm joined by Tim Vasco, who's the chief executive officer, the uh, founder of Block Search Blockchain. Uh, good morning, Tim. Good to see Hi, you. Hi, everybody. How are you? Good to good. see you. Good. So uh, give you a second here, Tim, and just uh, kind of frame this up. But this morning, we're talking again about the digital fly zone. And we're talking about something that is key that no other SaaS company has of the digital dozen. And it's really an underlying important component, and that is automated um, authentication. And we're going to talk about what that is here in a minute. But, you know, what if you knew that every person on the you knew that every person on the end of every transaction was a person who was authenticated and you knew who that person was uh what if you knew that your uh everything that you did in your business was secure um protecting your data your clients your vendors and your employees and uh, this morning we're going to talk about how to do that to integrate something that uh is very simplistic to integrate and is really a uh, the underlying layer, uh, important layer, uh, that Block Search Blockchain has that uh, we're rolling out uh, again this morning, which is called uh, ID Certain. Um, so with that, I call it the automated authentication uh, machine. Um, it's a solution again that others wish they had, and you know, others that are using 35-year-old technology now. Um, now uh, we'll be uh, uh, clamoring to uh, try and either uh, private label or to get this technology. But with that, Tim, I'll turn it over to you and let's talk about the digital fly zone and ID. Okay, great, Dan. Thank you. And uh, yeah, let's go through that. So the digital fly zone, um, let's just start out by talking about digital identity and what digital, digital identity uh, is. Um, with regard to the uh with regard to the world right now basically identity is everything um uh six months ago uh a year ago it wasn't as um relevant and i think we all know how relevant it actually is today um with covid with uh with the inability to even go out um, with lockdowns and so forth, we're faced with a, a different world and a significantly different world. Um, everything that we do is about our identity. We wear masks, but those masks have to, behind them, um, have a proof or a fair level of confidence, no matter where you go, that you're COVID free. Uh, when you go to a restaurant, you're being asked, if you can go to a restaurant even, you're being asked what your name, your phone number is, have you traveled? Uh, in where I live, they say, have you traveled outside the province and so forth. And so that's identity today. Uh, what identity was eight years ago, Dan? I yeah. mean, eight years ago, eight months ago. Eight months ago. It, it feels like eight years ago, too. <laughs> it certainly does. But what identity was eight months ago was the idea that uh, I had to go in and show my ID to open a bank account, to open a brokerage account, uh, maybe to get a pick up a prescription, uh, to get a mobile device or a mobile phone. That's where I showed my ID. It was very limited, really. When you think about it, the number of times to get a drink. And, and usually, uh, actually, they stopped asking me for my ID to get a drink a while ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'm actually excited when they ask because... Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You just say thank you. But the, the reality is today, we all are concerned about our identity. So our identity has merged. And not only has it merged, 
this has created a whole new level of thinking about what identity actually is. So it's thinking about, uh, A, is that really the person? Like if I just say, this is my name, this is my phone number, how do they validate that at a restaurant? Honestly, they don't. There's no way to do it right now. Um, secondly, we've got this idea, idea of the immunity passport. When we get on airplanes again, all these areas where it's very difficult to socially distance and so forth, how are we going to track and ensure that that's the actual person and that they actually have had this test? And it just starts there because now we've got another problem, don't we? Which is me giving up all of this information. And I wrote about this in Forbes about what, what, um, what did actually, I think was published right as COVID hit, but about all this identity information we give up on the internet. And now we have even more personal information about us on the internet and this idea of identity theft, fraud. Uh, Dan, you and I heard yesterday about uh, fraudulent COVID tests coming out, how to authenticate people that actually have had the test versus somebody that's stepping in and faking they had the test. And it will all continue. It will continue into the vaccine area and everything. So digital identity and authentication is the key to our digital future. It's the key to everything we do. With that, we um, have been building ID certain for some time. And we've, seen, we've shown this idea of the digital dozen, but what we always believed that the next iteration of the uh, net of the internet and the cloud era was to have a key-based identity and authentication. Now, we believed that was important for data privacy. We believed that was important because the, the, the instance of identity theft is so prolific now and was so prolific before this that if we didn't do this, do something about it, it was going to get worse. We all saw it when Equifax got hacked and 140 million people in the United States, half the population of the United States got exposed with all their personal identity. Like we believe this, this was a really important thing before all of this, right? right? Well, even before this, as you know, a uh, license that you showed just your identity could be someone else's, a fake one. That's right. So what we're talking about is even more secure than if you actually, you know, hand something to somebody. That's exactly right. So, so we, we started building ID certain, and if you think about it, when you look across this channel, nobody else, this is blank everywhere else except here. So nobody else actually does any of this identity checking really. And that when we go down this way about all these different interactions we have, well, guess what? All of those interactions are captured in data on the internet right now. Right. And that data really is what gave rise to things like Cambridge Analytica with Facebook. It gives rise to the antitrust suit with Google. It gives rise to all of that stuff because all that is tracked already. So we were already working on a way to say, well, let's make that private Let's make that be permission-based only. And let's make it so that no matter what you need to do on the internet, you can do it in one place and control your data. That was our thinking when we came out with ID Certain. Today, that has just expanded into this massive need for privacy. We're not in China. We're not you know, a state that just says, no matter what you do, we're going to know about it. And we don't want that. We want the same kind of assurance with our privacy. And the way we do that is with private key based identity. That's what Bloxert's blockchain enables. It enables us to use the blockchain to create hashes and 
encrypted information, yet it's validated and it is um, it is protected against hacking and it's protected against fraud and digital um, digital manipulation. That was the essence of the blockchain. So going back a little bit to what does the blockchain do? Once again, for those of you that might be new, um, we are able to look at a blockchain hash that looks like this. This is not a uh, human readable form. It is also not hackable to recreate this hash and steal the data that is underlying that. All of the data is identified here and we've embedded a component that is block search find me. This block search find me allows us to then go back and in the proper time and place with the proper private keys for the proper public address, the from address and the to address, these are our public addresses, we can find all of that data through the, um, through the blockchain to identify who we are. And the reason we can do that on a growing intelligent basis, this is an intelligence machine, uh, it allows us to use the, the models of AI to go through and say, yes, in fact, that is Tim or that is Dan. And these are actually the things that have happened. And yes, he's had a COVID test within the last 72 hours or you know whatever the requirement happens to be for that use case. Yeah. So that's the idea of, of ID certain. And what yeah. I'm gonna show you today, go ahead, I'm sorry. I just wanna say, because, um, this is really important. Yesterday on two different calls, I was asked, uh, the question of tell me what blockchain is specifically and what you're covering is very important because it's the underlying importance of encrypted uh, security and our whole virtual space technology, et cetera, which sets the stage for having very um, private um, access to everything you do, which, you know, having a private key and having uh, authentication ID certain is uh, one important security component of that, so. That's right. Yeah. So, so what we wanna do is show you today a little bit about how this technology on the back end relates to what we do every day in our lives and how we create our digital identity using our secure virtual spaces that are completely secure and uh, uh, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to do it live. So um, I have not just uh, pure disclosure. I've not done this any other way. I haven't even tested this. So you're doing this with me right now. We're doing it um, live. We're going live. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my vault. Now we've created technology to get to give you a vault that will allow you to download this on your Windows machine, your Apple machine, your, your phone, your iPhone or your Android phone and actually store your ID. We've, uh, we've also created this so every company, every enterprise out there, whether you're talking about an employee, a restaurant, a, a commercial bank, a insurance company or whatever, can do this and we're going to take you through these digital dozen over the next 12 weeks or however many weeks we do this right. over the next and we're going to take you through all of the ways that you start out with id and then you can validate literally everything and protect literally everything so you're seeing today this first cut of id certain and this can be configured for any use case and personally like you can use it personally, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do Tim's demo private key, okay? This private key is going to just be Tim's demo and I'm gonna put in a passcode. Now, once I do that, my key's gonna be created and what I'm doing is I'm calling back there to that 
Boxert's blockchain and I'm saying, hey, Boxert, give me a private key and a public address, something public that I can show that people may or may not know who I am, something private that I can store and keep personally. And what I've just done is, is created this private key. You can see it's hidden and I'm not going to show it to you. This is my public address I can share with anybody, okay? And I'm going to download this. We left it like this so that you could see what's going on here. But in your live use case, you'll actually get your wallet. And your wallet will download for you and it will give you your, um, your private and public key, okay? So I'm going to save these and um, I'm going to save these to my desktop right now. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to actually, um, actually I think I will show this, it's just a test anyway, is I'm going to show that I've got my private key and it says never share this with anyone. Never share this with anyone because the combination of these two give you this. Now, I will tell you that we can take the combination of any two of these three and we can find out what the private key is. So two out of three you need, okay? We also are able to, and many of us have experienced this, scan our QR code, which is also now associated with us. And I'll show you that in a minute. And so Tim, I'm gonna go ahead and continue. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I just wanted to state that you know, the private key, a huge differentiation there between that and the password. Most passwords are eight digits. Um, and our private key is 64 uh, digit alpha um, numeric. So uh, a very difficult combination to uh, try and hack a 64 digit private key. That's right. That's right. So, and, and we use 256K hash and we won't get into all the geeky right. stuff. But anybody who has a question, just let us know and we'll let you let you do it. Now, I just am going to show you on the web. I'm not going to show the, the mobile app of this, but obviously if we're on a um, if we're on a mobile device, we're going to just take a picture of ourselves. For right now, I'm just going to go ahead and upload a selfie. And uh, that's not me, by the way. Um, and I'm going to upload some uh, uh, a couple of documents here. I'm going to select a document type. It'll be my driver's license. But you did see we can do this with passport or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and upload a, a driver's license here to go with that selfie. And I'm going to drag it over here. And I'm going to upload that. And I'm going to drag, uh, I'm going to drag this instead of the back of a document, I'm going to drag the same thing show you this. Okay. And I'm upload that. So what I just did is I'm now matching the face here with the face here. I think we can see that that doesn't match. And I'm going to go ahead and pick some date of births and I'm just going to do fake date of birth, maybe some uh, address auto populated from my browser and to save it. Okay. So all that data is saved and boom, I'm in here. You, many of you have used things like CAPTCHA and, you know, choose the things that are stoplights or choose everything that has a bus in it or whatever. That was kind of okay and it's still good for username and password, but username and passwords are so easily hacked anymore and that kind of stuff really helps, but it doesn't solve the problem of identity at all. This solves the problem of identity, and we're going to tell you how you can use this tool to protect your identity on any site in the future, on anywhere you go, in, in place of passwords. So let's keep going, and I'm going to submit for verification. Now, this is actually think going, and it's looking at all these databases, and it's saying, um, am I able to uh identify you and you see this it says something went wrong choose another file we've onboarded in the back end what's actually happening is this all failed this went to a customer service center 
and it says, okay, I have failed, that didn't work. Now from here, what we typically do, this user is now going to <coughs> continue to try and submit that or continue without being verified. And this is what I really like. I think uh, if any of you saw or you go back to one of our prior videos, you're going to see our sign certain. So this is how we can authenticate signatures or any form that we want. We've just put up a sample, what's called a KYC application, but any form contract PDF that you want is now going to be auto populated right here. So you can see all that auto population happening right here. And in this case, if I was needed this as an employee, I'm onboarding with a company and I want to do a background check or whatever. And I want to sign this and I want to submit my form. Now, all of that is automatically on my contact record. That could be an employment form. That could be a contract. That could be a mobile, mobile phone um, uh, contract. That could be a credit card payment. It could be anything. There is a hundred percent audit trail behind this where I showed you before. Now for the first time ever, and let me go, um, let me go to that screen here. Give me a minute and I will open that back up. And all of that is happening back here. All of that is happening on the, uh, on the blockchain, on um, the uh, transaction block has just been created right here through that ID certain. What's actually happened on the inside, let me jump into another uh, area, is we have created a QR code, we've created the public address, and now we can validate that through what we call a BCERT token. So going back in, I now know who that person was. I know where they did this, geo geolocation, and I've got all of the files for that person, their KYC, their, um, their selfies, and all of that information is right here and viewable if I have the private key to unlock it. If I don't, it looks like this. If I do, it looks like this. So all of this information is either in an encrypted uh, private form or in a human readable form. Why is that important? Well, the reason that's important, Dan, and, and everybody watching, is now I'm in control. I have the private key. I choose who gets to see my information. I've protected my information. I've encrypted my information. And what's very interesting is we do this starting with identity, but as we go through this, we do this with documents, we do this with contracts, we do this with recordings of your video meetings. We lock it all to private keys and that's the trustonomics we always talk about. Right. We don't, I, I always like to say, and everybody knows this, is on the US dollar bill, in God we trust, well, I like to say in code we trust. Right. Because we can trust this out here. We can trust this code and we can trust that we hold that key privately. And so, you've, you've also shown that there's really two paths. One is if it's accepted, the other is if there's a failure and both paths lead you down the same place if there's a failure. Uh, there's the KYC form and other information so that you can review it and manually do it. Um, and there are reasons for failures. Like the other day I saw where somebody loaded a, an ID that had too much of a shine on it from the uh, right. over, overhead thing. And it really couldn't do the facial recognition match. 
Um, so there right. are reasons for failures too. So and, and and there there are a lot of reasons that that will fail. And so if if you've heard me talk in the past about machine learning intelligence, where computers and and capabilities of um, AI are taking us, Dan. I've talked about H hits also, or human intelligence tasks. Human machines can do a lot. We can do a lot with them. We can turn this whole idea of merging our identity with all the things we need to do in society now into a really effective business model and life model, really. But um, we also know that there are things only humans can really help with. Right. And that's why, you know, customer service, support desks, all those things, going back to our stack, when I said you have to have about a dozen things going to be a really effective digital company, you can see that right here, customer service desk. That's what you're talking about right, right. there. Yeah. So item number 10 on our list is customer service desk here of the digital dozen. So, you know, we go from here if there's a failure, if we're frustrated, let's face it, we're human. We want to talk to somebody. Right. We want to reach out. That really is me. Okay, let's get you through the process, Dan, because right. you need to be able to take, be taken through this process. Great thing is you go through it once. Now, the machine behind the scenes will make sure that you're authenticated forever. And because there's a lot of stuff going on to steal identities out there. If you are, um, if some anomaly comes up, I can now reach you because in this ID, we also identify every view. We identify every touch. We identify every, what I call data change event. And if it looks out of the ordinary, the machine's going to say, Hey Dan, guess what? Are you here? Are you there? Are you doing this right now? And it will um, let you know. And now you've got that and you're tied to your customer service desk or whatever, and you've right. got support. The estimation of this is, and I believe you found these stats, Dan. I, I did. $3 trillion industry. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, when you look at digital identity, you know, uh, from people's identities being stolen to the amount of uh, individuals, uh, which I've heard it's like 80% of individuals are working from home right now. There's a very important reason why we need to have digital identity. Number one, to protect what's important to us, to protect data, et cetera. But the growth of data has uh, has increased fivefold just in the, the past uh, four to seven months. And the increased need to make sure that we're working with those that we want to be working with and that we're not exposing our data to others um, is just a massive market. And uh, there are uh, uh, different countries around the world that are looking at this differently, that are trying to um, make mandates. And uh, even as you and I had a call with a, a company that is looking to do um, some very interesting things in the COVID area. Um, again, great. very important to make sure that if uh, they're going to open concerts again and open other things that you know that um, other people have either gotten a vaccine or other people have uh, gone through and have had a, a, a quick you know test on um, their temperature and that type of thing. So there are so many uses for this. And, you know, COVID's just one piece of this, but uh, just the amount of data and the amount that we're working online, it, it's just an, an explosion that has happened just this past year. Well, it's been happening over time, but because companies are being hacked at an alarming rate, it's an even more important need uh, because of centralized data. And with blockchain, the de decentralization of data and the ability to utilize this for um, personal needs as well as business needs. Yeah. And so, Dan, you know, this is one of the things that that came out recently yesterday, right. which is in order to attend concerts, Ticketmaster is exploring negative COVID-19 tests, vaccinations to attend concerts. Well, obviously, 
You know, when we go to light up our phone at a concert, we've got our phone. Right. If we've got ID certain and we've got our vault and we've done our COVID test and it's not fraudulent and it's all there, scan along with my ticket, boom, I'm good to go. Right. right. So you, you can start seeing that this isn't pretend. This is really important stuff that's happening not only in our business lives, but in our personal lives, if we ever want to get back out there and go see these guys. Right. right? Well, and it was something that was or mandated. Or anybody mandated. else. You don't have to like these guys particularly. Right. At least, <laughs> I'm not sure I can't see who that is. but <laughs> I, I know. I, anyway. Whatever. You but it's something point. that was mandated in the banking world, and it's uh, now something that's going to become a part of our overall lives. That's right. That's right. And and when I look at it from a business perspective, like a reality perspective, hey, Equifax didn't want to get hacked. They didn't want to lose all those. They didn't. They, you know, they got hit. Yeah, it was a mistake. Yeah, it was an open relay, all those kinds of things. And companies don't want that. I, I believe we looked at a, a year ago, um, the cost to a company per client record loss is in the millions. Like Per, per customer loss. So you think about all the lawsuits, you think about all the damage to your business. If you can survive it, um, I, you know, if you can survive it, you still have this huge brand problem. So this is a win-win. This, you know, building out an ID platform, building out a model that allows us all to collaborate and protect information is a win-win across the board. And um, so that's why we say truth, certification is a global mandate. Privacy is a global mandate. Everybody wants it. And transparency in practice, but not in the data, the underlying data. So it's this concept between privacy and transparency, logging and, and modeling what we need to know versus who needs to know it and how do, deep do they need to go. go. And that applies to every individual now. It applies all the way down to compliance and regulations as where all this KYC stuff started in finance and healthcare. And um, yeah, I, I had a couple questions here, which I think this is a good point. Um, somebody's just asking to text me, is this HIPAA compliant? And that's something we talked to somebody about yesterday. So Absolutely. It's 100% HIPAA compliant. HIPAA has been around for quite some time. And in Canada, it's called PIPIDA. Uh, so it's all over the world. We've got GDPR, we've got HIPAA, we've got PIPA, we've got privacy. And the idea is, and I really love the GDPR one, which is the right to be forgotten, right. the right to be de-identified. So, you know, when these, when these mandates came out of privacy, security, and things like that, they were on paper. And I've talked about this for over a decade now. Um, well, it's one thing to put something on paper. It's another thing to put it into practice. It's another thing to actually execute on that and make sure both the patient as well as the, uh, as well as the business are protected. Right. So really, when we talk about the millions of man hours we have into this, it was about automating a lot of those things. And actually, we started, Dan, looking at HIPAA because yeah. it was complex as heck. And you're like, how could you ever create anything like that in a business and really be 100 percent secure? Well, the way most hospitals and EMRs and everything did it is they centralized all the data and they just locked it down to a very few people. Problem is, that's not really the way the world works. Right. Like, how do I take something that's that locked down in a what we call centralized siloed technology and go use it to go see these guys in right. a concert? You know, that technology doesn't exist until now. It exists well, you're, now. You're talking, well, we're talking about HIPAA and PIPIDA and, um, for telemedicine to combine all of the uh, the functions that we're talking about here into uh, 
into ID Certain um, is amazing because you get the front end, all the information that you need from a patient. As we know, then it's secured. You can host a, a quick video call with the patient via the telemedicine here, and it's tracked. We know location level uh, where you know people were uh, dialing in from. We have information that's secure and protected between client and patient. That's right. So let, let's just take a real live example right okay. now with Health Certain, our our telehealth platform that we have ID Certain embedded in, which right. is right now, Dan, you and I are talking, right? And we're streaming to the world. One click, and we're not. Right. And nobody can get into this channel except you and me. Correct. Okay. That's compliance. That's privacy. Now, this entire stream is encrypted. So when we record this and we encrypt it, um, we will save all that information. So we've got a life cycle record hidden behind a private key. Right. Encrypted behind a private key. Not only one, but two, Dr. Dan and patient Tim. Right? right. Same thing in our platform, as we've shown, we can do a prescription, sign it. And we know that's Dr. Dan signing it. We can have an instant message chat from our mobile device. And from our mobile device, we can easily track and log everything, but keep it 100% private. So Dr. Dan and Tim can have quick conversations, we can have a video consult, we can do whatever and be completely in compliance, private and secure. Dr. Dan is not available and Tim wants, patient Tim wants to go do something, go to the pharmacy and pick up a prescription or maybe an alternative therapy. You've heard us talk about alternative therapies. Yeah. I go to the pharmacy and the pharmacist says, uh, well, are you taking anything else? And I say, yes. And he goes, what? And I'm like, I can't quite remember. Hang on a minute. And I click it and I see the name of my prescriptions and I show it to him or I give him permission to look at my electronic health record that I have in my vault. Right. Right. Now, right. now he can go, wait a minute, Tim, if you take that. Uh, CBD oil, you could have a reaction. I would recommend you do this instead. That's what a pharmacist is supposed to do. Correct. So, so we've really turned a lot of the things and we're turning a lot of the things on its head. We're not replacing those systems. We're supplementing them to be a bridge uh, in technology. We call it a middleware solution to extend the footprint of all of that really important data that is locked down for really good reason into a way that we can use that in the real world. So yes, we're HIPAA compliant. Yes, we can do all this stuff. And yeah, there's, there's a bridge and a way to do this and make it really secure. So that's why we call this, getting back to this, an economic mandate and inclusive knowledge and awareness. You just hit the nail on the head. There. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and somebody else just uh, texted me and asked about uh, ease of implementation, and it sounds very technical, et cetera. But I just also want to say that this is very simplistic to for a company to integrate, even if you're a one or two person company. That's uh, right. Small business, mid, mid size well, or large business. One of the biggest things um, back in 2006, <laughs> so I'm dating myself here, I wrote a book called. Um, biped and biped stood for business in process enterprise design or if i'm in the united states it's called business in process enterprise design it depends on if i'm speaking canadian or us <laughs> english okay and what that meant was and and my uh thesis back then before we wrote the patents and stuff was it's great to have all these big consulting ideas again a lot of paperwork and so forth but I've already got a business. It's already in process. I've already made investments. I've got people trained to do things. I've got, I've got customers to serve. 
how do I design my enterprise? How do I make that so I can really quickly apply technology? Now, I already told you I wrote that in 2006. We're in 2020. So 14 years ago, I realized there was a major block from the idea to the engineering to the, um, to the implementation. And it was that year where I set out on the journey to make this easy. So easy only took 14 years. <laughs> and I think in our, I think in our last uh, webinar, the one where I brought out the Rubik's cube, I said it took 36 years to be able to take that Rubik's cube and solve it mathematically with a computer in 20 steps. So I figured we did pretty good, less than half of what it took to solve a Rubik's cube to bring incredibly complex combinations into a relatively straightforward and simple implementation that really, yes, a large organization or a couple person organization could implement this or an individual. Right. And it's been a big challenge, but of course, very, very important and no more so than today. Correct. And I, that somebody was just asking about applications and the one, one of my favorites that you and I talk about a lot is just onboarding and new employees. And when you think about any business, uh, you know, you're making copies of driver's license. There's a lot of admin work that goes back and forth and sending documents now within a secure container. Uh, you can sign a contract, you uh, can text, go back and forth very quickly. And um, instead of waiting for maybe a background check, you get that instantaneously and it becomes uh, very systematic for onboarding new employees as well. Well, let's think about that for a minute too, Dan. Let's yeah. just kind of go through that and let's make a relationship to the, um, to the real world as well as to the, um, as well as to the uh, idea that we're um, dealing with uh, a digital world. So let, let's talk about the world from here. We used to have a beautiful office, had a reception area. It had a card, key card, so you could get in. Because we're in the technology industry on the interior door, we also had a, a identity card and it was biometric. And we hosted and built our own cloud. So all of our cloud was contained within this one centralized um, organization space. Right. And it was great. Like it, it was, uh, we overlooked the water and it's nice to have a cup of coffee there and so forth. <laughs> I mean, right. the great space. Um, and all of that we, to get to the, into the server area, you had to have biometric and a, uh, pass a uh, combination code. Right. Right. That was our version of private key. Yeah. Pretty standard in the tech right. world. Yeah. That was pretty standard. When we walked in, we took a look at a driver's license. You do this in, in Manhattan when you were going in there. Here's your driver's license. The most recent ones uh, are you show your driver's license. They take that. They print out a code. They tell you which elevator to take which floor it will take you to and so forth. That's the physical world. Right. 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 Would you just let anybody randomly walk in? Absolutely not. They're just like you would now, in your home. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, home's another one. Right. And I love this example. When I'm at my home and I go meet somebody on the street and I'm at maybe a neighbor or maybe somebody just wandering through the neighborhood, I have a conversation. If we strike up a great conversation or it's somebody I know, maybe we walk onto the property. Maybe we go one step further and have a coffee or a beer or a glass of wine and I invite them into my house. But am I going to let them into my bedroom? Probably not. <laughs> right? Let's hope not. So, so that's kind of the model that we're talking about here. At what level do you need identity? A lot of identity services stopped at and do today. The technology just stops at, oh, well, yep, that's Dan. Right. And it takes you no further. It doesn't take you through the journey of why identity is important. 
But in office, in home, now in every venue, the journey and the level of identity is critical. Right. And what you just uh, explained is different levels of access, which is important for whether it's banks or in the healthcare world. Uh, in healthcare, well, maybe you have a doctor, maybe you have, you know, as you were talking about, maybe you have someone who's a, uh, writing uh, prescriptions, and maybe you have somebody who's a coach who doesn't need as much information, but just needs to know that you've taken your meds or something like that. So, That's right. Yeah. So, so getting back to that then, Dan, this is why we lead into our idea of the five P's. Correct. Right? So what you need to know is you need to know your five P's. You need to know your people. You need to know everyone in that workflow. We used to call it supply chain. Now it's really life chain. You need to know your product. You need to track all of those things or your service or what you're doing. And the product could be anything from, you know, where did this, this food come from to who signed this contract, really? That's the same thing. And we need to track that. We need to have a process that's tied into this to track all those transactions along the way. That's where the machine learning and intelligence comes in. And then finally, there might be a payment. Maybe it's something like a Ticketmaster purchase. Maybe it's something like a credit card purchase. Maybe it's something like a mortgage, which we're working on right now and we'll be releasing very shortly, something big, some big ticket item with a bank. So we've got that. And then finally, what's that protocol? And this was the question you just asked. Right, PIPA, right. PIPA uh, uh, FinTrack in Canada, FinCEN in the United States. I can't remember the acronym in Europe for financial security and regulations. And this is why we do digital financial standards and we'll also be releasing the Digital Financial Standards Observatory project we're working on. You've already heard one of the uh, leaders of that speak on our world from here. And who's behind that? The big organizations like Columbia University, the Gates Foundation and so forth that are all adopting this concept of digital financial standards and box search is participating and working through that. So <clears throat> these are the things that are absolutely critical in really going beyond Hey, I took a selfie, my ID, put up a, a utility bill, done. No, you're not done. It's never done. It's it's a process. It's a flow. Correct. And so in order to do that, you, you kind of have to have that idea of this stack then. And the stack is really what makes ID certain special. It's what makes us capable of living in a digital world. It's it, we, we've released or and are improving our app store. I talked a bit about that. Right now, we've got our apps up there. We've got a couple others that are really interesting coming up there that will plug right into this um, because obviously we've built the stack. We want to invite everybody to come in and build an application that can tie into this technology. Um, we've built a powerful business blockchain, a business blockchain that knows some things need to be transparent, some things need to be private, and you've got to have that correct balance and moderator for that because we are transforming our lives and our businesses. And let's face it, how much of our lives do we spend working and in business and trying to make a living or building a company? I know I've spent the majority of my life doing that. More than sleeping, right, Tim? <laughs> Rather than sleeping. That's right. You give up something. And, you know, hopefully we give up less time with our families and a little less sleep. But that's the way it is when you're building, doing these things. So this is kind of what we talk about, which you can't just do it with a one-off app. And, you know, in technology, I won't go on that rant, but a lot of this there's not a lot of organizations that will finance a company like us. They don't have the kind of patience or tenacity or maybe take the kind of risks it takes to be, bring something out and deliver this. So yeah, it's, it's tough to do it. It's very tough. And uh, unless you're a giant, you're not going to do it. If you're a giant, what do you want? What are we seeing right now? We want to aggregate everything and sell more stuff with or without your permission. So there's a lot of 
a lot of real world reasons why this hasn't existed too. Uh, today, we need to transform that. We need to build a trustonomics model that allows both all these things we want for free, which really we learned are not free. They're at the expense of our identity. And um, we have to build business models that allow us to cooperate, provide these convenience of the cloud, as well as provide the security and privacy we're all demanding. And really, I, I believe that this will help us get back to life, the uh, kind of normalcy again, just like the concerts that we were talking about. That's right. So one of the things that we couldn't do, and you and I talked about this, Dan, without anything else, we couldn't do a black do this today without a Black Friday sale. That's right. So we want everybody to have ID cert. We want everybody to have this opportunity to participate. So you can go to our website, you can click on block search, and you can become uh, part of the owner of this this uh, this digital wallet movement and this digital identity movement or this digital vault, I guess I should say, by getting a token. I think um, I, I, I believe that we put this up there and it's right. uh, I think everybody who's who's visited here will get a coupon code and it'll roll it back. And you're actually when you when you enable this software, on, even if you don't know how to use it today, honestly, if you don't know how to use it today. If it's not ready for you to download or you don't, it's not clear. That's fine. We're an evolving company. We will push that out to you. We'll be here to support. But the important thing is that you know that you're on a track for what the next version of software and technology is, and you're going to be on the leading edge to utilize this in your lives, whether it's just for a password or it's for your next concert ticket or it's for your health record. You know, the stakes go up and down, your mortgage, all that kind of stuff. We're rolling all of those use cases out for you. This is live software today. And the cool part about this software is you become part of the community. Um, and another webinar will explain how that community helps authenticate and helps keep us all on a group basis uh, with trust because we sign all these blocks with um, identity and proof of what we call proof of auth authentication. Right. So with that, we're running out of time. Um, our obligatory quote at the end of the uh, at the end of the webinar is: "It always seems impossible until it's done." This has seemed impossible to us for a very long time. It is done. It is possible. It is live. It is coming to your home. Like it or not, you will need to be part of this movement. You will be part of this movement. We. We'll be there to support, to ad advance, to evolve for all of the things that the globe needs, the planet needs, the people need on the planet. And uh, yeah, it, it seems impossible until it's done. I've said this before, but my favorite statement that we had when we did have our office was the difficult we can do immediately. So for all of you uh, businesses out there listening, yes, the difficult we can do immediately. The impossible will take us just a little bit longer. Yeah, just so, 1.8 million man hours or uh, development hours, person hours. That's right. That's right. That's called that's crazy. Simple. That's called crazy. Yes. So, with that, I would like to thank everybody for joining us. We've shown you ID certain. We've shown you it works. It's live. It's ready to go. Um, we've shown you ways to get involved. We really want to get you involved and bring your business, your life to a more secure world with trust and and truth and transparency. That's what we're about at Blockserts is the trust, truth, and transparency. And it's not easy. <clears throat> it's been hard. It's a it's a long journey. We're making it easier for you. We want to make your uh, collaboration cube just a little twenty step process. Boom, 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 and it looks like the perfect Rubik's cube because it's our job to make you safe and healthy and digital. And so you can work from home or anywhere on the planet. So with that, please do stay safe, stay healthy, stay digital at home. And Dan, um, yeah.
There you awesome. go. Another week. I can't believe it. it seems like we just signed off and it was last week. But <laughs> thanks again, Tim. Um, great to be here on a Friday. And uh, want to also state you're watching this uh, live on YouTube. And if you would uh, click on like and follow us and then ring the bell. The importance of ringing the bell is that you get an update of each of these live recordings in your YouTube. So thanks for following us. And we appreciate all the new new individuals that have uh, come and watched us today. So thank you. Yeah, and we're excited to uh, work with you. There will be uh, the world from here next week at 930. Please join us then. And uh, we're signing off. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye.